When you think horror games, you might get a bunch of different answers as to what is a what is a horror game. Five Nights at Freddy's, Amnesia, Outlast. More importantly, what are the horror games of today? And that's kind of what I want to talk about because this game has really blown me away. Of course, I'm talking about Poppy Playtime. This was a game that was released back in October of 2021, and it was a game that took the internet by storm because it had a very unique feel to it. The gameplay, very unique, the environment, very unique, and the scares and the horror element was just... well done. And then came the Scourge. Because immediately after this game was released, another game was released that I, that I absolutely despise to a fundamental level. And that game is Garten of Banban. And I played the game before, and I've talked about the game before, so I'm very well acquainted with this game. And to be quite honest, the first section of Garten of Banban was good. I liked it. It was, it was, it was well done, I thought, as a demo. And then they started releasing Rapid Fire, update after update, installment after installment, and then things just got a little bit strange. And it's, it's not even good strange, it's, it's bad strange. It looks half-baked. The reason I'm mentioning Garten of Banban is because Poppy Playtime also released another chapter, Chapter 3, and I watched people play it and it looks just... It's it's like night and day. It's like peanut butter and jelly. They, they combine, they're the same, but they're just so opposite. And what I mean by that is this is a kind of common gaming theme that I've been seeing lately, and we've all kind of been seeing lately, and that's childlike horror games. It's an argument that I've seen a lot online, and that's a lot of these childlike horror games are just rip-offs of Five Nights at Freddy's, which I full-heartedly disagree with. Because Five Nights at Freddy's can't have the claim to childlike horror. It's not fair. Because it's just a small section of what childhood is, and that's like pizzeria stuff. And if you've played Poppy Playtime, it's it's very different. Not to mention other horror games that have childlike horror aspects within them have existed long before Five Nights at Freddy's. I think it was released around the same time, but Among the Sleep was one of those horror games that I remember from years ago. Childlike horror, childlike aspect, and it was good. It was well produced. But I'm, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to talk about Poppy Playtime because I feel like this is the closest thing to a spiritual successor to Five Nights at Freddy's. This is the closest thing that we're ever going to get. Because Garden of Bon Bon isn't even in the same league. They're, they're, they're peewee. But by golly, does Poppy Playtime just hit every single thing that it needs to hit when it comes to that list of just a really good horror game. First of all, graphics, very, very well done. Gameplay mechanic and unique gameplay aspects, it has got that too. What made Five Nights at Freddy's so unique was the fact that it had that standing still checking cameras, and that was a very unique thing to see in a horror game. And yes, that changed as more games kept being added and they decided to kind of go in different directions, but it kind of stayed mostly consistent. And Poppy Playtime with, with the hands that you use to activate everything within the toy factory or wherever you're at, I think that it's just really, really well done. And then we get to the lore and oh my god, the lore, the lore is so good. Because Five Nights at Freddy's, if it was known for anything, it was known for its complex history and lore. That's what it was, That that's, that's what its bread and butter was made of. And I think Poppy Playtime has kind of nailed it as well, because there is so much lore behind the game, and it's so well executed, and they even have their own Bite of 87 called the Hour of Joy, which is one of the creepiest things I have ever seen in my life. Spoiler alert if you haven't played the game or you don't want to play the game, whatever. It's basically this black and white CCTV footage of all the toys within this little factory going berserk and killing every single employee there within the span of, like, a couple minutes, and it is incredibly creepy and grotesque to see, and I, I loved every second of it. Every second. Every second. They had their own Bite of 87, and if I, if I might say something a little controversial, I think this is better than the Bite of 87. I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. Poppy Playtime played off this horrific event and did so in a very, very unique way. And they, they've, they've got my gratitude and attitude. You see, that's how you do a horror game. That's how you do a horror game series. Because it was put out gradually and slowly. And when it was put out there, it was good. It was solid. 
unlike other games that I've seen. For one, let's look at Hello Neighbor. Let's go back years and years and years because this was something that I've been thinking about for a while because that game kind of just dropped off the face of the earth. The reason why it did is because they did things relatively rapidly. They'd release Alpha, Alpha 1, Alpha 2, Alpha 3, Beta, Beta 1, Beta 2, Beta 3, and each time the game would change so drastically that by the time the third beta came out, it wasn't even the same game, and that people lost interest because then they tried to push this mysterious lore towards towards the audience, and it just didn't it didn't end up working. Went back to it, finished the game, and by that point, nobody cared. Nobody cared about the game. Who the hell cares about Hello Neighbor? It's 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 gone. It's done. But the biggest vice, the biggest sin in this little childlike horror game disaster that's unfolded barring barring five nights at freddy's and poppy playtime of course you know of course but garden of ban ban is just so bad because what it is it's just a shameless cash grab that's all it is i mean they've they've already got their things out there their advertisements their, their little plushies their cool posters everything like that and then you play the actual game and the actual game is tragic because for one, the gameplay is just not fun to play for the most part. The demo was good, the demo was good, and then things just took a very swift nosedive afterwards. For one, it's not as fleshed out as Poppy Playtime or Five Nights at Freddy's, so it, it just can't really compete visually. Story-wise, I have no idea what the hell is going on. None at all. I know it's like a kindergarten whatever, it Does, doesn't matter because it's just such a mess. I implore you to watch one of the videos of the characters speaking for one, for two reasons. One, I think it's done by AI. I don't even think they got real voice actors. And two, if you listen to the plot that they're saying with, with their mouths, with their robotic mouths, it's so bad. It's just not good. Another person's year. No one wants to converse to the being who is less useful than the seat they are sitting on. Get back here. This is the wrong bus too. What are we gonna do? I'm thinking. Nap, nap. We just, just lost, lost two. This wasn't supposed, supposed to happen. happen. We need to follow. Wait, is that the correct bus? But the worst part, my friends, what, what I think is the worst part is just how rapid fire they come off. I, I don't even know what game we're on. Five, six, a thousand? I don't know. What I do know is that all of them came out within the span of like a year or two. How many Garten of Ban Ban games are there? No. There's no way. I could have sworn there was like a thousand, but there's only four? Doesn't matter though. You might think that's a gotcha moment on me, but no, because all of these were done within the same year, 2023. All of these chapters were released same year. The first one was released on January of 2023. The fourth one was released in August of 2023. That's like an eight month gap, not even a full year. I I'm getting off topic. Point is, Garden of Ban Ban is just a shameless cash grab and Poppy's Playtime is an absolute masterpiece. It's one of the games that kind of gives me hope for, for horror content in the future, because I feel like we're we're in a little bit of a dry spell, you know? Five Nights at Freddy's, it's kind of like, it's it's the old dog that you know you gotta put down, but you just have too many good memories with that dog, and you, and you don't want to put a bullet in its head, you know? And I know that's kind of a crass way of putting it, but you know what I'm saying. And apart from that, there really aren't any good childlike horror games that I've seen that kind of capture that childlike horror that we all used to experience. The only one that's really done that is Poppy Playtime, and it's done it to such a fantastic degree, and I can't wait to see what happens in the future. Are they going to make another chapter? Who knows? I hope so. But nonetheless, I like what I see. I hope they keep up the momentum. I hope they keep up that good quality, that story, everything. You, you, you've got my respect. Nothing but. But that's all I want to talk about, and that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If indeed you still are, my name is Broxter, and I bid you all adieu.